All right, lads. It is uh, Freeza 700. We are back discussing 40k lore. This time, we're talking about the Blood Gorgons. No, they do not worship corn. So here we go. After the Now, I know what you're going to say. With a name like Blood in their name, you would think that they are corn worshippers. They're not. In fact, they don't really worship the Chaos Gods. This is the more interesting thing about this chapter. So, a little backstory before we continue. So, my buddy, Corn, my roommate, he vehemently denies this chapter that they are in any way, shape, or form Corn followers, and I totally see why. So, here's why. This chapter was founded during the Cursed Founding which is a very, very shitty time to be found, it is the 21st founding specifically. But the cursed founding is when humanity decided, ooh, we can make better space marines than the Emperor can, and they proceeded to fuck up. Now, most of the chapters that were made in the cursed founding either went traitorous or were executed by the Imperium at large just because they saw some sort of chaos taint inside the genes or the warriors, really. But this was one of those chapters that broke away. Now, there's a reason why they were excommunicatus traitoris instead of excommunicatus hereticus. There's a big reason for that. One is that these guys did not really worship the Chaos Gods. They kind of really don't. They're kind of like the Alpha Legion in the sense that they are with Chaos, yes. They fight with them. They sometimes use Chaos weapons and magics and shit like that. But they really try not to. They really don't trust Chaos at all. The only real reason why they even use Chaos to begin with is because, like, they are just one chapter. There are a thousand Astartes strong, and they're against the whole fucking Imperium. Well, they're going to need allies, and it turns out the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So if Chaos is willing to accept my reinforcements, they can have me. That's more or less the way the Blood Gorgons work. They don't really have a home world. They just kind of float around in their shitty ship. Their ship being, you know, the Cauldron Born. It's a Space Hulk, so it's pretty fucking big. But at the same time, I just call it a shitty ship because it's got damage to it. Because they never been bothered to repair any of that fucking damage. Which came from their own little in-chapter civil war. So, after the 21st founding, where they really just renounced the Emperor, they really denounce the Emperor's uh, will. They really, really value independence. They fucking hate subservience to anyone outside of the chapter. So, unless the Emperor whips out his fucking Blood Gorgon badge, he ain't gonna lead these guys to battle. They're not gonna shout his name to glory. They are very prideful of that sense of individuality, that whole independence. So, the Imperium said, What? <laughs> You're not gonna serve me? That's it. We're gonna kill this motherfucker. And sure enough, they decided to retreat. Now, when they retreated into the Eye of Terror, something happened to them, which is that, well, being in the Chaos Realm, things are a little different. Things are very interesting. All of a sudden, demons and voices talking into your head are actually real things. And, of course, this is good enough to split a chapter apart. This is where there was kind of a tiny, tiny civil war that happened in the ship. So now they're stuck on a Space Hulk with a bunch of Space Marines who all of them don't get along with. So now there's like countless fucking war bands inside the ship. Well, seemed like they were just going to pretty much kill themselves out until there was like less than 100 dudes remaining. And those ones would pretty much win. Until... Their chapter master, known as Gamadon, Gamadon was a very interesting guy. See, here's the thing about Gamadon. Gamadon somehow united everyone, but he did it through blood bonding. I know what you're going to say. Blood bonding? What's that? Well, we're going to get to it. So, essentially, he did this new dark custom. It's a very dark ritual that involves chaos magic and all sorts of nice fucking things. And essentially what it is, is it makes it where two battle brothers are now psychically and physically 
connected to each other. So now they're both stronger than each other. So now they don't need to, you know, be told by their battle brother, oh, I'm reloading. No, he just knows that he's reloading and he needs to cover fire. He doesn't need to be told, watch out, duck. He just knows that his partner sees that he's about to get whacked, so he ducks instinctively. So it's very interesting that that bond is the only chapter that really does this. Because you would think other chapters would do it, since after all, this really does unify the chapter. But either way, he introduced this and then proceeded to whip down anybody's ass who decided to call himself a Chaos Lord for whatever Chaos God. And Gamadin reunited the chapter. That's fucking great. Cool, now we got our fucking Blood Gorgons back. Fuck me, not like as if we need more Chaos Marines. But hey, whatever, let's go do it. Either way, now that they've been unified, they're kind of in a weird situation. So, they're a small chapter. As I said, they're not fucking Legion. So they don't have like 100,000 Astartes. They have 8,000 Astartes. Maybe even less. So how do they fight? Well, they pretty much just raid the Bastion Sector. The Bastion Sector is a sector in the Imperial Space that they routinely go around and buttfuck to shit a bunch of settlements and then hightail the fuck out of there before anything can ever really catch their asses in the, in the, in the act. So that's essentially the way they are. They're not battling in, like, fucking Black Crusades and shit like that. No, they're not doing that. They don't have really the numbers to be in a sort of high-pitched battle like that. Instead, they have the numbers to just go raiding on a shit ton of worlds and fucking up a bunch of shit. So, that being said, what is some of the things about this chapter that makes them unique? Well, aside from the rituals, the rituals are kind of like their own separate thing. I, I kind of don't want to dip into them too much. I just want to give you guys a quick overview. They do like one ritual where it is called the Sacrifices of War. And what that ritual does is essentially prepares an Astartes group, or really a couple, a cute little space marine couple, and it gets them ready for their one night together in a bloody fucking battle. And the other ritual is the blood bonding that I said earlier. But aside from that, this chapter is very interesting is that they praise individuality still, yet they get rid of the individual in that independence. So by doing the blood bonding, they get rid of the real independence that you have because now you're chained to your battle brother. But somehow they still praise independence. It's kind of weird, really, honestly, when they do it. Essentially, the only independence that they advocate for is themselves, like the chapter, not for the individual. So that's cool, I guess. And they don't really use a lot of chaos magic, and they don't really trust librarians or sorcerers because they see chaos the way, really, you should see chaos, which is that, yeah, it's a nice tool to have, but it's not something that's reliable. It's, it's a very fickle thing indeed. So if you use it, it has a chance of backfiring onto you. Speaking of sorcerers. So, besides the fact that they really lack any librarians, they have something called the Churgian Witches. The Churgian Witches are essentially apothecaries, but they are also psychers. Now, here's something that is very interesting about the Church and Witches. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, by the way, so you make up your own mind how you'd pronounce that. C-H-I-R-U-R-G-E-O-N. Witches. So, Churgian, Churgian, I just say Churgian just because it made more sense in my brain when I read the book. So, yeah, I'm not exactly a very uh, linguist here. Either way... The Churgian Witches are the ones who are responsible for healing Battle Brothers and recovering Gene Seed, performing the rituals, like the blood bonding. Now, here's the interesting fucking thing from the novel, is that the Churgian Witches, not all of them, are actually Space Marines. So, you can have just a regular human be a Churgian Witch, who enacts these dark rituals, this chaos sorcery, and heals your battle brothers and synthesizes gene seed. That's fucking weird. What? You trust a normal humie? You trust a normie? 
But yeah, I just thought it was so fucking weird. Like, you trust them? In fact, it's actually shown a lot that, yeah, even the Battle Brothers don't really trust the Church and Witches, even the ones who are uh, Battle Brothers. But at least the ones who are Battle Brothers are a little bit more respected, less feared, and less uh, shifty than the ones who are just regular humans. Because regular humans, they're not conditioned to be immune to some psychological effects. Whereas the Blood Gorgons are. So if a giant demon with like 10 titties comes up, a space marine can just hold his ground and say, Whoa, I don't care what you're saying, back the fuck away from me. Whereas a human, he's going to be like caressed by all 10 titties and he's going to be like, Mmm, mommy, I'll do whatever as you say. What? Poison the gene seed? Sure, right on it, right on it. So that's kind of why they're kind of like, eh, about the church and witches. Besides that, this chapter has some interesting things about it. Like, um, when I said their combat doctrines are more pirates, that's pretty much all they are. They just raid shit, scavenge, all sorts of things, which I think is actually really funny. But there's actually something that's really interesting is that there was once a planet known as Solo Bastion. This is something that made me kind of suspect who their founding chapter is. So there's really no hint in the Cursed Founding chapters to what gene seed they used on each of the chapters. So you just have to kind of base it on the way the chapter acts. So if the chapter acts a certain way, we're going to think that they're probably that chapter. So essentially, if I see a Cursed Founding Space Marine start building up a sandcastle, I'm going to think, hmm, he might be Imperial Fist. Because look at him trying to fortify the fucking beach with sand. Hmm. So, and then, you know, you got the other side of it, which is that if I see a Cursed Founding Chapter Marine just butcher 12 civilians for no reason, I may think, hmm, he might be Angron's lot. But either way, this chapter might actually be Alpharius and Omegon lot. That's something that I thought was a little interesting. So, the thing with Alpharius and the Alpha Legion is that the Alpha Legion, even during the Great Crusade, the Emperor didn't really like them. The reason why he didn't really like them is because he couldn't control them. For some fucking reason, they just did their own thing. They even broke the laws of the Imperium. They were the first ones to go against the Emperor's will, essentially. But they never were caught, and they were never openly talk about it. Like, they infiltrated the Imperial Guard. They infiltrated a lot of things. They even infiltrated Terra. So it's kind of interesting that here's the Alpha Legion, who's really just a tool of destruction that just kind of destroys everybody, both whoever uses the tool and whatever the tool is used on. Well, this chapter did an act on the planet Solo Bastion where just four Blood Gorgons, four, created an insurrection in the population, and they made it where they fought the Imperial forces, and this... Four Gorgon uh, incited insurrection lasted quite a bit. But they taught them, you know, basic military strengths, they smuggled in weaponry, and they also put demon blood inside some of the people, which mutated them and really genetically altered them to make them stronger and better. But shitty little tactic like that, that screams to me Alpha Legion. Because think about it, you're an Imperial Guard, you're defending a world. All of a sudden, boom, you're getting attacked by a bunch of indigenous populace, and you're like, what the fuck? Where are these people coming from? And then a space marine comes by and goes, whoa, foul sorceries at work here. And then he traces the source to the Blood Gorgons. That, to me, screams Alpha Legion. But at the same time, there are a few other things about the chapter that you would think, eh, it's not exactly Alpha Legion. Like, as I said, Alpha Legion, they're not exactly too keen on Chaos either. But, eh, Blood Gorgons seem to rely on Chaos a lot more than the other Chaos Space Marine chapters. In other words, if the Chaos Gods disappeared, some of the Chaos Space Marine Legions would still function pretty okay. Not entirely okay, but pretty okay. 
the Blood Gorgons would shatter. They just need chaos in order to do their rituals and all the shit that makes them really them. So this is something I think is very interesting. Like, the Alpha Legion could live without chaos. They don't fucking need it. Word bearers, they'd be very, very into alcoholism is enough, I should say, really. But either way, they also name their captains. So instead of having, like, chaos lords, they just have captains who are known as coitons. Coitons is just the title of the captain. That's it. There is no, like... Oh, does a Koyan, just like the Churgen witches, do they do more stuff? No, no, no. A Koyan is just simply a captain. They just decide to be confusing like that. Don't question me about this, please. I don't need more questions. And then, the chapter master, Gamadin, is known as the Corsad. Now, the Corsad is just, again, a, name, a title that they use to call the chapter master. Besides that, that's pretty much been it about the Blood Gorgons, their military tactics, a little bit of their history, and really just enough for you to know what they are and why they are the way they are. Besides that, I might do a video followed up by this where I talk about their rituals, because I feel like their two rituals do need a little bit more in-depth explanation as to why they work, what do they do, where are the pros and cons of it, stuff like that. Besides that, this has been Frieza 700. I'm out. See you guys next time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> that's the most important fucking part. And um, that's about that. So, besides that, see you guys next time.